this is Tori Jackson. I am currently in my home studio right now. Um, I just want to say, first of all, thanks to uh, Laura for, um, for giving me this opportunity. Today I wanted to show everyone um, just my process. Um, hi! I wanted to show everyone my process of um, how I do portraits. I've had a lot of questions about how I go about doing my portraits. Um, but before I do that, I just want to show everyone my studio a little bit and give everybody time to, to get on. Um, yes, that is a llama in the background. <laughs> I actually got this at a music festival from Jerry Cahill. And if you don't know who that is, you should check him out because he's a really good artist. But I do a lot of reading in this space. Um, there's a lot of patterns and colors. It's a statue that I did in college. Here's the guitar that I painted. The Lord of the Rings guitar. Uh, I have a lot of rocks <laughs> in this room. I love collecting rocks. Some of you might have read that in my interview. Um, telescope. Lots of Jimi Hendrix. And I have a lot of books, like a lot of art books, especially. Um, Brandon Boyd is one of my favorite artists. So I've got two of his books. And whenever I need some inspiration, I always read his books. They always get me there. And I wanted to show everyone um, a little bit from my sketchbook. So this is when I was in high school. And this is where I started. Bad. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't too bad, but it wasn't where I wanted to be. And over the years, I just, I just kept trying to perfect my, my ability to draw human figures. And so I just kept practicing. I taught myself the, uh, the graph technique. And let's see if I can find it. There it is. So that was about halfway where I want it to be. And eventually, I kept practicing with the graph technique, which I'm going to show you today. And eventually I got here. I, I'm pretty sure this was in the same year as that picture. Huge difference. And here's my art closet. I've got a lot of paint that I just gathered over the years. I've got Prisma markers, acrylic, and I don't really use acrylic a lot unless I just want my background to dry super, super fast. Um, I've got liquid watercolor, and for anybody who's trying to get into watercolor, the liquid is so much more vibrant than like the powder form. I've got flowers down here for reference and a lot of spray paint. I use that a lot during uh, tooling, or I have for the last three years. Um, one of my latest paintings. So I'm gonna go over here and just show you guys uh, what I'll be working on today. You can see I have, I've graphed out this entire canvas. I will literally take this ruler and make a hundred squares. And that is how I keep my, uh, my people proportionate. That is Geronimo. I love Geronimo. So if you have any questions, uh, 
while I'm painting, just feel free to ask. And I'll try to look over every once in a while and answer them. Uh, so here's my palette. And I do not use specific colors at all. I literally put every color on my canvas when I start. And I use Reeves. Reeves oil paint. To me, it's more vibrant than the other oil paints. Um, that could be just me, though. I'm, I'm not particularly sure if that's accurate or not. But um, I'm going to put every color on this palette. Uh, I've been using this for way too long, so I'm just going to turn it over. And one thing too is, so I told you about the graph technique. And what's so cool now is, with all of this technology that we have, I am able to graph out everything and use a different device for reference. So that's super cool. And uh, while I'm putting my paint out, um, if anybody's curious at all, uh oh, sorry, you guys. There we go. Um, I use usually these paint brushes. They're like eight dollars a piece, but but they last for a really really long time if you take care of them. Uh, for the graph, um, the app that I'm using, oh, I can't remember which one I got, but I will post it on my Instagram later on, or my Facebook if you follow me. So, like I said, I do not use a specific color palette, and I actually have like a really bad color OCD, so I go from red, orange, yellow, green, and then I love phthalo blue. So I actually have a bigger phthalo blue. These are probably... Uh, I think around ten dollars. So I have all of my colors now. Um, I do not use black. I don't like it. Um, I actually got in trouble in college for uh, using too much color, but that is not a thing to me. Um, I just don't like dark colors. I like for my for my art to be balanced and colorful. Okay, so uh, there's my paintbrushes. Okay. Oh, also, um, I do not use this in the process of my paintings, but if you're using oil paint, it's always good to have terpenoid. And you do not want to put it down a sink because you'll blow it up. So use a glass jar and when you're done with it, 
you definitely want to throw it out the door. Do not put it down a sink. <laughs> Me and Brooke Conway know that best. So here's my process and I'm going to start, I always start with the lighter colors um, because you can always cover up mistakes easier when you use lighter colors first. So I always use those first. If you use darker colors first, it's really hard to go back and correct anything. So I'm going to use my Itty Bitty Paintbrush. I never actually really go over... Where is that paintbrush? It is rare that I go over a, a, the size of a paintbrush this big. Uh, it's super small. Which is why it takes me so long to finish paintings. But that's okay. So for skin tones, I usually use a yellow okra. And I kind of use like a kind of a circular motion. Usually I have music going on, but um, because I'm using my phone, I don't. <laughs> but one of the questions uh, that I did for the interview before this was, um, what music do I listen to while I'm in process? And usually I listen to a lot of softer EDM. I listen to a lot of Beatles. Um, so, yeah. Just whatever I'm in the mood for. And also, when you're painting, I know I just skipped and went here because I'm super ADD, <laughs> but uh, usually I try to work from left to right because I use my right hand. You don't want to smudge any of your painting in the process. And also, sorry, I have a paintbrush in my mouth. Uh, oil paint is all about layering. So if it doesn't look quite right to you when you're first starting, it's technically not supposed to because you do have to put so many layers on top of each other. My mom just joined. No, don't be scared of oils. Milton is one of the greatest artists I've ever seen. I don't know if anybody has seen his picture of Jimi Hendrix, but he's amazing. I was really intimidated by oil paints uh, when my, I had a wonderful art teacher my first year in college. And uh, a requirement that we had was to buy a set of oil paints. <laughs> 
and I was so scared because I actually only did um, black and white. I did a lot of charcoal at first. But um, it's just a series of techniques, honestly. And once you have the technique down, I, I never went back after I really got comfortable with it, especially because, like I said, I am really slow when it comes to painting, just because I use it more therapeutically. Um, but I can stop and go back to it. And if you didn't notice what I just did up here, I know it just looks like blah right now, but um, it'll form the more I layer. Um, I like to take my white and kind of put it on the outside of whatever color I'm using if it's going to be somewhere that's lighter and kind of blend it into the white. So also for my darkest color, um, like I said, because I do not like using black, um, I use phthalo, phthalo blue, if anybody missed that earlier. And another tip too for just for figures in general, just for drawing and art, um, when it comes to trying to figure out like how to draw an eye, or I had a lot of trouble with mouths, um, you have to break it down into a series of shapes and shadows. That's basically all it is. See? So now we're forming the eye. Thank you, Laura. Milton says, thought I was the only one who struggled with mouths. No. <laughs> it took me years, I feel like, to master, or not even master, because I still haven't mastered yet, but it took me a few years to be able to get it where I was satisfied.
I am in my studio. My, my home studio, and I will turn the camera around and just show you if you missed it. That's my little reading spot. I have a lot of llamas, and there's a Charlie Brown over there, too, because that's me and my dad's thing. Um, a lot of art, my tapestry. Yes, this is my home studio. And that picture over there, my dad actually got me that when I was like three. He actually got it from the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts. Go figure. And I have cherished it all my life. Everywhere I've moved, that picture has come with me. And a lot of unfinished paintings over there <laughs> because I always have about 10 in rotation. I get bored really easily, and uh, which is why I always have about 10 paintings in rotation, and I'll just go between them. And sometimes I'll switch mediums as well, just because I get bored. I am a part of 21 Dreams, and uh, because of coronavirus, it's obviously it's not open right now, um, but usually I've got a few pieces in rotation there, so shout out to Kalanji, he's great. Um, there are so many different styles of art in 21 Dreams, it's, it's really an amazing uh, gallery to be a part of. Okay, so I am going to move down to his cheek. And really, I need to erase And I don't know if you guys saw this, but my grandfather is amazing with woodwork. He made me this when I was like, I don't know, seven or eight. And he made it as a pencil holder, but of course I put a lot of paintbrushes in it. So I'm going to erase some of this. so that it doesn't make his cheek so muddy. There we go. I actually learned a lot of my techniques when I was a tattoo artist. I don't <laughs> I don't personally have any tattoos, but I did learn the art of it. And um that is where I learned a lot of what I'm doing aside from uh one of one of my teachers in college, well, two actually. I had two really good teachers in college. I had really good high school teachers. I don't know if anybody on here knows Tony Tony, but she's amazing. Um, because of her, I I won a national award because she met me um, while we were on Christmas break in high school, and she signed a paper that I needed to enter this national contest 
So she's amazing. And Jennifer Chestnut. Yes, my pencil lines will make it money. Um, I just, sometimes I'll erase as I go, but then sometimes, like, when it needs to be darker, I'll just leave it because I like it to be a little bit muddy. I have learned to when you're working with uh up oh, hold on there's a question yes I do have a particular series of work that I'm working on and I would show it to you but it's supposed to be a secret so I can't show it to you and it's killing me which is why I have actually not posted a whole lot of paintings lately um because it's supposed to be a secret. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I usually don't. I had someone ask if I accept commissions. Not really. Um, it's very rare that I have time to do commissions only because uh, there's always a message that I'm trying to put out. Um, so I really don't ever have time to do commissions between, you know, life, <laughs> life and trying to, trying to finish the, the paintings that I want to produce. Oh, what I was going to say is um, when you're working with realism or trying to, um, there are not a whole lot of hard lines. So I end up blending pretty much everything. There we go. And like I said, um, the graphing system is really, really helpful. Hi, Dr. Sartorius, or Professor Sartorius, sorry. Um, I talked about you earlier. I don't know if you heard me. So the graphing system is really, really neat. Here it is on the Kindle that I stole from my mom. And it's cool because 
you can close up and just focus on those areas. I don't always use the graphing technique, but when I want my painting to be really, really precise, I do. Uh, so usually with older faces like Geronimo's, I'm probably always going to use a graphing system. With the painting that was included in my interview, I used a graphing system on my grandmother because she has so many uh, just beautiful lines in her face. So now we can see that my face is kind of forming. It's coming together. Obviously I won't be able to finish the whole thing while we're on here because I like to take my time and put in a lot of details. And um, for, for skin tones, I sometimes I will use that kind of peachy color. Let's see if I can find it in my art box. Uh, there it is. How many layers do I normally do? Ooh, uh, I don't know if I can even answer that. Um, just until it looks right to me, it I may go back to it over a course of months. But um, I usually don't use this color. Uh, I usually just stick with yellow okra and phthalo and orange. Yes, Milton, you should try it. Sorry everyone, my phone's dying. I'm gonna have to hook it up really quick. I'm not sure if that just, if this is working. If my phone is charging. Rookie mistake. Hopefully it is, and hopefully this doesn't die on me. My apologies. Uh, the last time that I did a painting that I hated, um, ooh, that's a good question. Um, 
probably for um, Art Splash because it was rushed. Um, I was asked to do that event. Uh, it was really, it was really quick. So I did a piece and I didn't like it and I hated it so much that I just didn't even, I didn't even bring it to the show. <laughs> I just, I just left it at home. Okay, my phone is charging, so we're good. So I'll get back to this. Okay. And it is so rare when I'm painting to to ever clean my brushes out um, because I don't I don't like for my paint to thin out when I'm painting so I wait until I need to clean my brushes out usually to to use my terpenoid. Yes, I like my paint to stay on really thick when I'm painting. So I'm seeing that it is it is 10:39. So I think I actually went overtime. Um, but if anybody has any more questions before I get off of here, I'd be happy to answer them um, in my little studio here. So yeah, that that is how I start out. All of my portraits usually, um, because usually uh, I like to paint a lot of aged people, if you will. I like to ah, cool, Laura. Um, I like to paint a lot of older people. Um, so yeah, and they have a lot of lines in their face, but. I will log off of here because um, it's been over 30 minutes. <laughs> I went over my time. Sorry, but um, yeah, this is my studio and this has been fun. So maybe I will log on to my personal account at some time and, and show you guys the rest of my process. Thank you for watching and thank you to Laura and thank you to 
the Montgomery Museum of Fine Arts for including me in this. It has been so, so fun and such an honor. So, bye guys.